Welcome everybody to Real Dad Speak. Um, my next guest today, I met this dedicated son, father, and grandfather about a year ago when we both worked at Somerset Mall in Troy, Michigan. He's semi-retired, so he works part-time. When he's not working, he makes sure that he spends time with his family and friends. When he was growing up, his dad gave him a piece of advice that he has always followed. His dad told him to take care of your mother. Today, we'll be talking about the impact of adult children taking care of their parents, especially their mom. My guest today is Manny Zavala. So welcome, Manny, and thank you for coming on my podcast today. Hello, Sarah. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. All right. I'm going to start off with some basic questions about your background. Um, where did you grow up? I grew up right here in the city of Detroit, um, by way of Corktown, right by Old Tiger Stadium, Michigan Avenue and Trumbull. Okay. So I went to uh, Holy Trinity grade school. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I met uh, a great, uh, great priest, Father Clement Kern. He was a big influence on me. He was a good man. Okay. And, he just had his uh, 40th anniversary of his death just a couple days ago. Wow. Yeah, the uh, archbishop, fellow classmate of mine. No, he's not an archbishop. He's a cardinal. Oh. Uh, Roman Catholic Church, Joe Tobin, mm -hmm. uh, did a high mass in Father Kern's honor and in honor of the Assumption of the Blessed Mother also. Okay. Yeah, right. here, here at Holy Trinity, so. So where'd you go to high school at? Uh, product of Holy Redeemer High School in Southwest Detroit, Verner and Junction. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, what did your parents do for a living? Uh, my dad was a teamster, a mm -hmm. uh, hardworking man. Uh, he had to put on winter clothes every day to go into work in a cold storage over on Bagley and uh, 14th Street. It was called U.S. Cold Storage. Okay. It was winter time. Okay. And your mom, did she, was, what did she do? She was a cashier. Uh, started off really young as a cashier, probably maybe 15, 16. And the owner saw potential in her, she's bilingual, and uh, talked her into getting her real estate license. And really? she was off and running once she got her license. She was a, a real go-getter. Okay, all right. So you didn't become a teamster and you didn't become a real estate agent. So what career did you choose after high school? Well, I'll tell you, when I graduated in 1970, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I was going to enlist in the Army at the mm -hmm. time the Vietnam War was going on. But luckily for me, upperclassmen and older guys in the neighborhood were coming back from their tour of duty. And to a man, they told me, Manny, or Manuel, I, I went by Manny later on in life, but it was Manuel, do not enlist. I hear you're going to enlist after graduation. Do not enlist. It's, uh, excuse my language, it's fucked up over there. Wow. The, only, the only good thing about Vietnam is the weed. What? To a man, they said that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was a different time, different era, the yeah. 70s. Yeah. So, so anyhow, uh, I got a job on the railroad. I was a railroad clerk. And from there, I worked at Star Tool and Die uh, factory, uh, made bumpers, a rough job. Everything was done by hand, lifting and, and uh put in these pieces of metal into a, a, a tool and die machine and uh, pressing buttons and watching uh, 
this heavy machinery form hoods, bumpers, uh, et cetera, for the big three. So that was an interesting job. Dangerous. I saw Absolutely. a man. I saw a man lose a few fingers. Wow. And I saw another young guy. He had long hair. He got it caught up in an industrial fan, and it, it took a big chunk of his uh, hair off uh, and his scalp. Uh, I guess you could say the safety regulations were a little different back then in the early '70s. Jeez. So, my hats off to any factory worker that put in 25, 30 years, uh, started, you know, from way back when. Right. Rough, dangerous job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I had, I had a few jobs. And uh, where'd you finally end up? After the Stroh Brewery closed, in which I was a Teamster, I got paid very good money there. I was a high-low driver. Uh, it was a great place to work. If, if you had to work in a factory, Work in a beer factory. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> you know, it's a different time, different era. In in the early 80s, uh, they had uh, a schedule where you got a paid half-hour lunch. You had a 10-minute break of 15, your lunch, and then a 10 and 15. And in every break area you went to, you could have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> every beer that Stroh's made, every every pot uh, was on tap or in a bottle. So not a bad place to work. Yeah, especially if you like beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to get my wife upset when I got laid off. I'd uh, sit down in, in the rec room in the basement, had a house on West Grand Boulevard at the time, and uh, I would be drinking beer. As I was laid off, I would get another case of beer, and my wife would say, what are you doing? I said, well, hon, I'm just trying to get my job back. <laughs> Working, <laughs> drinking, doing what I can to get my job back. <laughs> the more beer you drink, the more they'll need you to come yeah, back. Yeah, they're going to need me sooner. They're going to have to call me back to work sooner or later. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and all good things come to an end, Sarah. Uh, they shut down the plant. Uh, uh, Schlitz Brewery Company tried to buy us out. We were family owned by the Stroh Company. Stroh's bought that corporation out. Uh, but we won the battle but lost the war. The executives took a look at the old plant which was on Gratiot Avenue, Strohs, and uh, they said, this plant is antiquated. We've got a brand new plant uh, all on one level uh, down south. You ought to move your operation into our new plant. And once the old man died, that's what, uh, uh, that's what happened. They moved down, down south, mm. like a lot of jobs. Then I landed on my feet. Uh, a year later, I landed on the Detroit Fire Department. Okay. And that was a that was a a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I was a good fit. It was a good fit for me. Yeah. 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 That's good. So you're working on the fire department. Were you uh, already? Well, I guess you were already married. When did you decide you wanted to get married and have children? Oh, God. Let's see. I got married when I was 23. Okay. Like uh, like anyone back then, any guy back in those days, if you got your girl in trouble, you married her. Okay. Yeah, so that's what happened. She was an East Sider and uh, uh, a Catholic girl. She went to an all-girls Catholic school and uh, mm -hmm. very smart went to Wayne State uh, she was uh, a community organizer always looking out for the young ones the kids uh, and uh, yeah I liked what I saw <laughs> she had great legs uh, smart and I said yeah I should get I should volunteer my services <laughs> And you charmed her into marrying you, huh? <laughs> well, 
Yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. we, we had four four wonderful children with that marriage. So good. Yeah. That was All a good right. thing. So um had you not uh you know uh got her in trouble as you say, would you still be looking to get married? Were you I mean, watching your parents and stuff, did you still want to be married and have kids? You know, I come from a large family and my mom and dad worked, mm -hmm. but they always had time for us, made time when my dad came home. Mm -hmm. If my mom was out and about showing homes, he would make us dinner, you know, and he was a pretty good cook. Okay. Uh, he cooked more often dinner than my mom did, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, they worked as a team. They combined their incomes, and uh, it worked out good. We were going to private schools, Catholic schools, and uh, yeah, it was. They were a good team. They were okay. a good team. They used to call each other viejo and vieja, which okay. is literally old man, old lady. <laughs> yeah, that's cute. Yeah. So after you had your family, how often did you spend time with your parents? You know, uh, I would, uh, by the time I had my kids, uh, my divorced. they divorced. So uh, I spent time checking on my dad. My mom was out of town for a while. And uh, when she did come back home, uh, I would spend time with both of them, just checking on them. You know, it was uh, something I did. My dad always told me to take care of your mom, keep an eye on your mom, take care of her. He loved his mother and uh, he quit school at an early age when his stepdad passed away to work the, the fields and help bring in some income uh, for his mom and the younger siblings. So how many siblings do you have? Oh, boy. I've got, uh, there's nine of us all together. Five boys, four girls. So, okay. And how many family. uncles and aunts do you have on your dad's side? Oh, my God. Now you're making me think. Uh, over, over, over eight? Yeah, let's see. On my dad's side, I've met two brothers and two sisters, but they were down in Texas and in Mexico, so I wasn't really close to them. Okay. And they didn't come up this way much. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he had one brother in Corpus Christi, and uh, he passed away. I know he wanted to go back to Nuevo Laredo, but uh, all the people he knew said, uh, don't come down this way. There's nothing here. Uh, gang problems and narco problems down there is in the border town right next to Laredo, Texas. So, mm -hmm. on my mom's side, well, oh God, she had uh, two brothers, and uh, she was in the middle. My uncle John, my uncle Frank. Uh, on my dad's side, it was Uncle Joe, Uncle Simon, uh, Sister Mary. God, I'm sorry. I can't remember the okay. other. No, yeah. I just know your mom, your dad telling you to take care of your mom. And I was like, did he get that from his uh, growing up, you know, to take care of his mom? Did his dad tell him that about his mom? And so he passed that on to you. Yeah. Yeah. He really loved his mom and uh, he uh, sacrificed his education to help her out. So. Uh, yeah, he just, since I was a little guy, he'd tell all, all the, the brothers, mm -hmm. take care of your mom, no matter what, take care of your mom. He loved her mm -hmm. and he instilled that love in us. Okay. So are you close with your brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, most of them. <laughs> 
There's, the ones uh, that are here in Michigan or close? The, the ones that are here in Michigan, I'm close. Huh? Yeah, we'll yuck it up when we get together. We'll have fun. Okay. And uh, yeah. Uh, so you say you have four children? I have four children, two girls, two boys, two daughters, two sons. They came in that order. Okay. Cecilia, Anita, Manuel, and Alexis. They're all in their 40s. I was going to ask that they're all grown now, right? So. They're all grown and they have children, except for Manny, uh, <laughs> my son Manny. But uh, yeah, I've got uh, eight grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren good for you good for yeah you. I'm an so old did the way the way you and your brothers and sisters were raised did that help you to raise your children to be close like that too yes yes sarah my children uh were always close to each other they looked out for each other and uh they loved each other so it, you know yeah the big sisters would take care of the little brothers and uh yeah okay. uh, i remember taking them to the fireworks uh right by the fireboat uh the fireboat was docked over there on west grand boulevard and uh right on the river there there's a little park there mm -hmm. and my youngest son alexis was cold and his big sister just wrapped him around her, you know, just just to keep him warm. And uh, adults took notice, you know. Oh, look, the big sister's keeping the little guy warm, you know. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was just things they do, you know. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah, they always looked out for each other. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a little different now, but uh, I hope they resolve their problems. My okay. my two my two daughters, they're not too close right now. So, um, okay, well, God's willing, they'll they'll get it together. Yeah, I think when the chips are down, they yeah. would be there for each other. Yeah. I believe that. Yeah. So your grandfather now, and um, you say you got eight grandkids and then some grand great grands yeah i have eight and eight eight grandchildren eight great grandchildren okay so <laughs> were you were you close to your grandparents uh yeah yeah i i was fortunate enough to know my great grandfather miguel well actually his name was apollyon Miguel Morales, everyone in the neighborhood called him Big Mike, uh, a no-nonsense type of guy. He lied about his age uh, to work. He knocked off 10 years uh, of his age so he could get a job at Ford Motor Company, you know, so hard worker. He had a, a parking lot on 10th and Bagley and uh, he would let me help him park cars for Tiger Games, Lion Games, and he'd pay me with a silver dollar. So I was a very rich kid when I had that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> park it here. Easy in, easy out. Okay. I still remember. Yeah, so he gave me a good work ethic, and, uh, and my... My grandma, my mom's mom, was a wonderful cook, uh, a real, a real character. She liked her lambrusco, and she had, uh, I guess back then it would be room and board. It was uh, clean linen once a week and uh, breakfast in the morning, and it was uh, it was always men in her rooming house. And no women allowed. That was that was uh, one of her rules. But she was always up in the morning cooking for these these guys, and off to work they'd go. And uh, if she had some extra food, she'd give it to the hobos that would come by, and she'd make them uh, a burrito, egg and ham burrito, or whatever you know. Mm -hmm. 
sometimes it to her detriment I would be big oh. uh, the word would get out <laughs> you have a line it. at her door <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but she had a good heart yeah. and tough cookie mm. yeah so now you say your dad could cook for you guys your grand your grandmother could cook are you a chef as well yeah, I can cook. You know, most firemen can cook. Okay. Uh, yeah. You're in, uh, in the firehouse, you're only as good as your last meal. <laughs> <laughs> so you're kind of like, you're kind of like a, a football player or a basketball player. You're only as good as your last game. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, yeah. they don't have anything good to say about you. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a good meal, Manny. Uh, oh, thanks, Lou. And they go, I, I've had better. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, so, you, have, you have to have thick skin, but mm -hmm. it, it was a great job, great camaraderie. So, yeah. How many years did you serve? How many years were you? Uh, 25 Fire years, one month, one day okay. in the firefighting division, city of Detroit, from 1986 to 2012. Okay. So, so yeah. How's, re how's retirement life? It's easy. Retirement life is easy. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, working part-time. That's not so bad. I, I kind of like it. It keeps you in the loop, you mm -hmm. know? And it's, uh, yeah. Uh, it can't be margarita bill every day. Uh, okay. <laughs> for me, it would kill me. <laughs> yeah. So being a granddad now, so when you, when you guys, when your family get together, what kind of activities do you do? Mm. Back in the day, my dad and my Uncle Joe and my Padrino Nano, they would get out their guitars. Uncle Joe would play his bongos and they would uh, sing songs, uh, romantic songs and uh, ballads. And yeah, it was, they were very entertaining. And uh, the women would cook play cards, tell jokes, and the guys were jamming in the basement, you know, uh, and it, yeah, it was a, it was a good thing. And the kids running around in the backyard, in the house, just, just having a blast. It was good times. Do you Picnics. play an instrument or sing? No. <laughs> oh. oh, you just cook well. Okay. I cook well. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I suppose I can sing, but I don't play an instrument. None of my brothers do. And my dad's a, a pretty good guitar player and singer. But uh, none of us, I think, had the patience or the skill to pick up an instrument and play. So okay. we're all good ball players, like my dad. He was a very good ball player. Fast hands. He's 93, and he still has very good eye hand coordination yeah he uh yeah i'm sure when he was a young man he was an exceptional athlete yeah. so now you say your dad's 93 how'd you celebrate because i think what his birthday was last week august 8th okay he, he, he wanted to go to heinz park okay. he's got a pavilion that he likes and it's it's close to the restroom and uh we just had uh, uh, like a little barbecue there and just talked about old times and stories. And uh, he doesn't drink anymore. So we did the drinking for him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was joking with my mom who was there. She's 87. She's got dementia now. But uh, when they're together, he brings her back, you know. Oh. Okay. Yeah, and she was very astute. She was right with it. So okay. it was a very good day. Yeah. Now, I can remember uh, when we were working, your mom had a little, uh, she hit a little bump, and all of you guys got together. Tell me about that. Okay. You know, my sister Julie, who was the primary keeper, uh, just couldn't handle it anymore, couldn't handle her. And uh, she was working, she's got a catering business. 
uh, in a takeout place called Detroit Loves Tacos. Mm -hmm. And the business was taken off and it was just hard for her to keep an eye on her. Everyone else, including me, we were all working. And uh, we came to a decision to put her in a home, which was tough. My dad was livid. The man who told me, take care of your mother, take care of your mother. He couldn't believe that all his children were good with that. Boy, did he read us the riot act. He was upset. He says, bring her over here. I'll keep an eye on her. I mean, yeah. So, you know, he's getting up in age and he's, he's a good man, but he, he's a hard man too. He's, he calls it like he sees it. And uh, yeah, it would be tough on him. And anyhow, we tried it. We had a, a cousin who is new people in, in the caretaking business and they found us a, a home in Taylor, but my mom didn't thrive there and she wanted to go home. She, we, yeah. Uh, so after a few months, we all got together and we did a division of labor. We would all take turns watching my mom and the men who couldn't, namely me, I would give my sister money to pay for a nurse uh, to keep an eye on my mom when it was my turn because I'm the oldest and if I had to, I would, but I am not going to change my mom's diaper. Uh, not if I can help it. It's just, it's just the way I am. I'd rather fork up the dough and uh, just visit her, be with her, make her laugh, and uh, talk about old times. I, I, I ask her a lot of real estate questions, <laughs> and she just perks right up, <laughs> and she's just right with it. Or we'll play some music that she likes, or watch an old movie and uh talk about her travels and yeah so yeah i have a good time when i'm with my mom i kind of bring her out of it mm. so i'm her number one son <laughs> right <laughs> and you and your other siblings you all took part in taking you know watching her and stuff once you realized she wasn't doing well in the nursing home and she's much better now she's much better at home uh, living with Julie, my youngest sister, uh, and my sister-in-laws will go over and keep an eye on her. My sister, Cecilia, will, Mary will, will take her to her house. So, so everyone is chipping in and my mom is thriving and that's the way it should be. And leave it to, uh, my dad, who we all call daddy -o, to uh, read us the riot act and uh, basically light a fire under our feet and uh, made us move in the right direction. So hats off to the old boy. Yeah. And he'll watch her for a few days. He'll take turns too. Wow. Okay. Yeah. He'll cook for her and uh, yeah. Okay. That's good. Mexican music. They watch novellas together. He's a, a baseball fan. Uh, he'll watch soccer, football, but he'll put on the novellas, the soap operas for my mom. Yes. Okay, so uh, your mom is doing much better now. Everybody's contributing, even your dad. So uh, yeah. have you given your children that same advice about their mom to take care of her? You know, uh, I'll tell you, I hope they take care of her. I'm sure they will. You know, they love their mom. Uh, most of them do. <laughs> I have Man, one daughter. You are a comedian. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> Anyhow, yeah, I think when the chips are down, she's not going to be left alone. They're going to okay. keep a good eye on her. They want her to retire. Uh, she's semi-retired, but she's, uh, you know, she's been a community activist all her life, and it, she's not going to let that go. Mm -hmm. So she'll be a, you know, but okay. yeah, but they'll keep an eye on her. They love her. Right. They, they love their mom. Yeah. Yeah. They're good. They're good that way. Yeah. They get together and they go on vacations together. So it's got to be love. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So why do you think it's important for children, especially sons, to take care of their moms? You know, I sincerely believe, and most men, I don't care what ethnic group they're from, would agree that no woman will love you will love a, will love you like your mother i think every man can agree to, about that you know that uh, there's nothing like a mother's love uh, there's something there between a mother and a son you know she's always looking out and uh yeah uh, yeah I had a fireman tell me that an irish guy mm. said manny it's going to be no woman's going to love you like your mother. And he was absolutely right. That is truth. So men have a special bond with their mom. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen tough bikers, one percenters uh, amongst their group. When one of them, one of their own loses their mother, they all wish him well, all the hard toughness hey you know brother i'm sorry to hear about your mother you know and and they mean it sincerely so yeah, yeah. So. all right yeah. we're gonna take a quick break and we will be right back everyone please stay tuned we'll be right back hi there i'm amy grant and I just wanted to offer a few tips that have been so helpful to my sisters and me caring for my aging parents. Um, the first is start the conversation way early. If your parents' uh, mental uh, faculties are slipping, I mean, we really started talking to my mom and dad saying, let us know what you want because there's gonna, time that you, there's gonna come a time you can't put your sentences together and you've trained us for this. You did your job so that we could help take care of you. Lots of conversation. Um, another thing would be um, our parents lived by themselves and then one of my sisters and her husband moved in with them. But little things like making meals, even before your parents are um, showing signs of dementia or Alzheimer's, a lot of times nutrition tends to um, not get as much attention and so even a few years ago, we started taking turns making good, healthy, well-balanced meals and taking them by. And the other thing I would say is um, if, you're, if your parent that is struggling has always been a very social person, even when they can't communicate properly, they're still social. And you just kind of have to get over the awkward embarrassment. People are not afraid to look at a toddler and babble and talk nonsense and smile. and. And so we should also be able to just take a deep breath and babble and talk nonsense with somebody that's losing their communication skills. Okay, welcome back everybody to Real Dad Speak. We're continuing with my guest, Manis Bala. We're talking about taking care of your mom when you're an adult. And Manny, we've come to the part of my podcast where I ask the final five. I call it the final five, and it's five questions or fill in the blank statement. So number one, besides taking care of your mom, what other advice did your, get, your dad give you? A real important one that I've always stuck with, it's always been with me, uh, 
I came home. I was still living in this home. And I came home drunk. And I had a job. And he said, oh, you've been out? Yeah. Yeah, I have. He goes, well, son. He goes, you can stay out as long as you want. You can drink as long as you want. You just make sure you get to work tomorrow. On time, no excuses. If you can do that, you're a man. Mm. You know, and uh, that stuck with me. You can party like a rock star, but you better get your ass into work and you better be there on time. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's always stuck with me. I, believe me, Sarah, I've been a few times where I, I've gone into work hungover and wish I could have called off sick, but eh, my dad was right there, you know, right. and, and uh, he was a heavy drinker back in the day, but he lived by those words. He party all, like a rock star, he'd party hard, but he was at work mm -hmm. half hour before start time every day. So, yeah, that's one. That's a big one. All right. You think of any others that stand out? <laughs> Other than take care of my mom? Uh, gee, Sarah, my, my dad is a man of few words. Uh, I'll just leave it like that. Those are the two big ones for okay. me. Yeah. All right. All right. My second question. Have you seen your child, your children applying the lessons that you taught them on their children? And how does that make you feel? You know, I see my son Alexis with his children. He cooks for them. Uh, he's, he's separated right now from their mom and he, he gets them one week and they take turns weekly uh, and he cooks for them. He'll joke with them. He gets them dressed for school. He'll take them to uh, jujitsu classes. He's, he's very, very involved in, in their development in their lives. And I was like that with my children. Mm -hmm. So it just carries over. And the same thing with my daughters. They're always very involved with their children. And uh, it means a lot, you know. Uh, my son, Manny, he's got a good heart. Uh, all my children love animals. They're all animal lovers. They're great with their dogs and uh, yeah, so they have good hearts and they're loving people. So I'm thankful for that. They're hard workers and they're all contributors to society. And I'm thankful for that too. Good. So number three, how does being a granddad compare to being a dad? <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Uh, being a granddad, you can spoil them, yuck it up, and uh, show them a great time, and then you can send them on their way. <laughs> <laughs> send them home. <laughs> All right, go home now. <laughs> Grandpa's full of fun and games, and now it's time for you to go home, get some rest, <laughs> discipline, whatever. Yeah, uh, I like that I can... Uh, pass them on to their parents. My rule was I can watch the grandkids once they're potty trained. I'm not changing diapers. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they plenty of that being the oldest uh, when I was a kid. Yeah. Oldest of nine. Yeah. Changed a lot of diapers. And being a father of four, I changed a lot of diapers. And I'm not talking. I'm talking old school. Uh, cloth diapers. Cloth diapers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no wipes. <laughs> no. no. Uh, yeah, the good old days. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dighty service was something. I thought I was really big with that. 
Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? You, uh, yeah. you get all the dirty diapers, rinse them off, and then just put them in a in a pail, and the dirty service guy would come with a, a fresh batch and yep. take the old ones. That was really something. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Number four, what advice would you give adults who have parents who are getting up in age? Ooh. Be patient with them. Remember that they took care of you uh, when you were young and vulnerable. They looked out for your safety, looked out for your comfort. And now it's just your turn to do the same for them when they're up in age. All right, number five, my final question. Well, it's not a question, it's uh, fill in the blank. So fill in the blank, uh, Manny. Having both of my parents at this stage in my life makes me blank. Makes me a blessed man. I am very blessed to have both my parents alive and well, reasonably well still with me it's a blessing from god to have them to joke with them uh to sit down with them have dinner with them or breakfast walk in a park it's just yeah i know how lucky i am how blessed i am we all are if, if there's so many guys i know men and women who would give anything to have their mom and dad still walking this earth. So I am blessed. Somebody up there is looking out for us, my family. So. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Manny. Appreciate you. Sarah, it was a pleasure seeing you. And uh, I hope to see you again. I hope we work together again someday. You we are. Will. We will. You are, uh, you're a go-getter, Sarah. I wish you the best, and thank you. It was an honor and a privilege being on your show. And, thank you uh, so much. And I'm looking for the fourth Mrs. Savala. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, she has to live in sin. <laughs> if you know any church ladies, send them my way. <laughs> I hear there's something else. I would love Stop, Manny. <laughs> I'll see you, Sarah. Thanks, Goodbye Manny. to you. Love you. See ya. you later. See you. Bye. All right. Thanks, everybody, for uh, listening or watching Real Dad Speak with Manny Zavala. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Real Dad Speak. Thanks. <laughs>